Hi, I'm Alfred L. Martin Jr. I am author of The Generic Closet, Black Gayness and the Black Cast Sitcom, and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Communication Studies at the University of Iowa. What drew me to the subject matter of The Generic Closet was generally a self-examination and an idea that I didn't really ever see a lot of representations of my whole intersectional self on television. So rather than just doing a look at representation, I wanted to actually study the systems that produce particular kinds of representations. And that ultimately led me to uh, thinking about and thinking through the generic closet. What I mean by the generic closet is a kind of industrial three act structure that maintains a particular way of telling black gay stories that on one hand centers their homosexuality as very central to not only their characters, but the storylines. And by doing so, on the other hand, it ensures that these characters, storylines and story arcs are completely done at the end of each episode. While certainly this is something that has historically been uh, embodied or enacted rather in white cast sitcoms or multicultural cast sitcoms. What is unique about the generic closet's um, pull on the black cast sitcom is that that to this day is still the only way in which black gay characters appear in the black cast sitcom. If we want to talk about shows or programming that exist outside of the generic closet, we actually do have to move outside of the sitcom. So if we have 30 minute comedies like Insecure on HBO that does um, have a black gay character who is at least somewhat recurring on the show, um, we can also look toward the, what I call the black cast melodrama. So shows like Scandal, shows like um, uh, Tyler Perry's The Haves and the Have Nots, as well as Greenleaf. Those shows actually work in a different register. And primarily the reason that those shows engage with black gayness outside of the generic closet is largely because of the ways that they imagine their audience. What is unique about the black cast sitcom is that it is imagining an audience comprised of a family, quote unquote family. And what happens with these black cast melodramas or even the quality comedies that come out of places like HBO is that they are imagining a very specific kind of audience rather than a broad audience that is being imagined with the black cast sitcom. And so producers and audiences really should be thinking about how they are imagining black queerness to exist within the fabric of black gayness. One of the things that a number of writers and producers said is that once they had done a sort of coming out story for these black gay characters, regardless of the fact that they had other examples of stories outside of black gayness or gayness broadly, they said they could not think of other stories. So black gayness in particular in the black cast sitcom becomes tethered and inextricably tethered to the idea of a coming out story, which again, works as a three act structure that is about discovery, detection and discarding. The media industries are certainly uh, culpable in producing and reproducing the generic closet. I think that because black television generally is understood as very precarious because as we saw with Fox, as we saw with UPN, as we saw with the WB, and even as we saw with a place like TBS, black programming is often picked up when networks are on the ropes. And when they recover from whatever financial doldrums they're in, they typically will return to more lucrative audiences who are generally whiter audiences than black audiences. So part of the responsibility of the media industries is to, on one hand, think through how they can be reaching a number of black, um, black audiences simultaneously, but also to be thinking about the ways that 
Black folks may in fact not be as anti-gay as they imagine them to be. And that quite frankly, is part of what the generic closet is all about, is it is about an imagination of Black audiences as anti-gay when that is often not indeed the case. 